what's going on guys in today's video we got a special video for you guys i'm gonna be doing my top 10 favorite wwe superstars of all time so let's get straight into it my number 10 the undertaker the reason i put the undertaker is because like his matches are always iconic and they're usually good like the one you know i grew up watching his matches like with triple h and hell in a cell with Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, even AJ Styles, CM Punk. So, so yeah, it's basically it. Um, and yeah, nothing else to talk about. I must. I think The Undertaker should be in everybody's top ten. Probably not, but that's my opinion. So let's quickly get to number nine. Okay. 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 I know I'm like a hate for this one, but I put The Miz at number 9. Now, you guys might be wondering, The Miz? The Miz? Yes, The Miz. For me, I like The Miz. I've always liked him good or bad. Um, He's very good on the mic, and in my opinion, he has... He's just... He's just amazing on the mic. He's entertaining. Um... And uh, his reigns are always good. Like, his Intercontinental Championship reign was good. His WWE title reign was good. The Money in the Bank and U.S. title together reign was good. The Miz is just the Miz, you know? And he's in my top ten. It was hard putting him over The Undertaker, but I'm going to be honest. I, I'd rather see The Miz for the fact that I've grew up with, you know? Like, I'm putting wrestlers like I've grown up watching. But I'm also putting some other wrestlers, but, you know, I just, to miss to this day, you know, he's one of my favorites. So we got to put him in my top 10. Up next at number 8, they got the phenomenal AJ Styles. The reason I put AJ Styles matches because, you know, AJ Styles matches are never bad unless they're like, you know, like. Matches like that nobody cares about, but you put Styles in a pay per view, any type of pay per view, he's gonna deliver, and that's why I had to put him here. I know he's been in WWE for about four years, five years, so I couldn't put him that higher. But if he, if I do this list, like like say like if he's been in the company for like a couple like more years, and I would have put him more up like top six, maybe top five. But for now, he's in my top eight. Up next, we got the beast, the conqueror, Brock Lesnar. I put Brock Lesnar. Yes, I put Brock Lesnar. Um, my opinion, I like Brock Lesnar. I know people be hating on him, but I personally like Brock Lesnar. And I like when he takes the title. I don't know. It's like the thing with Lesnar is he gets a pop when he takes the title away. Like, he gets a pop. The only time he really didn't get a pop was against Kofi. Because, you know, it's Kofi, you know? And, like, he always gets a pop and then gets booed, like, two weeks later, you know? But, in my opinion, I stay with the cheer. I still pop. Um, Unless he's facing, like, a wrestler that I really like. Like, it's over him. Like, for example, Rollins or Reigns. So, yeah, so I put Roman, I put Roman as my top. Well, we're not going to get into that. Let's... Finish with this. Yeah, I put Brock Lesnar. His moves are good. F5, Suplex City's entertaining. So, yeah. Up next, we got the Cerebral Assassin, the King of Kings, Triple H, recently celebrating his 25th anniversary. But that's not all about that. But Triple H is. You guys might be surprising. I put him up high. I put him in my six. Because I like Triple H. And I'm talking about, like, his entire career. Like, not, like, right now I grew up watching. Like, back, you know. So, you know Triple H was good. And, well, what can I say? He's a 14-time WWE champ. You know? That's, that's a good accomplishment. He is bad at WrestleMania, though. He's lost, like, 16 times. And he's won, like... I, I don't remember the last time Triple H won a Mania. Besides Batista... So, yeah, he's probably been, like, in 20 Manias. Probably in, I know he lost 16, so he probably lost, like, three. No, he probably won, like, three or four, but that's not the case. Triple H is in my list, so let's get to my number five. 
To make it into my top five, I put the face that runs the place, John Cena, um, the 17th time WWE champion, former US champ as well, tag team champ. You already know John Cena made the Vanna Mania. He won two rounds. The only thing Cena had really hasn't done is become intercontinental champion. And the universal champion, if you want to confirm. But you know he's winning one of those by the end of the year, probably. But that's not the case. John Cena made my top five. I know for a fact John Cena's like, it has to be in everybody's top ten, no matter what. So... He's an automatic fit to my top five. Let's get to my number four. My number four is the champion, Chris Jericho. You just made the list. Um, Chris Jericho, yes, he made the list. He's in my top four. Now, Jericho. Whew. Jericho is, he's the best in what he do. He always puts up a good match. And I like Jericho. And when he had the list going on, that was the hottest thing going on in WWE for a while. Um, I was very over, and now he's in AEW, the champion. He's still doing his thing, entertaining, even without no fans. We don't need no fans when Jericho's in commentary. So that's the thing about Jericho. Like, he even said in front of no fans, many fans, he's still going to do what he do. So Jericho's in my top four because his matches are always good. Okay, now time to get to my top three. The big dog, Roman Reigns. Now, this one is shocking. It's shocking for me that I put him up high. But I felt like I had to because I like Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns gets hate, but I don't hate Roman Reigns. And even before the leukemia, I was always a Roman Reigns fan to this day. So, yeah, Roman Reigns, me and my top three. Now, before we get to my... Um, my last two, I want to give uh, honorable mention. I would have put Stone Cold, The Rock in here, Edge. I would have put it in. I would have put it in Rey Mysterio. Yeah, I would have and, and and probably Kane. Those were my five honorable mentions. I would have put in. So yeah, so they're not gonna be in the top two. Letting you guys know. At my top two, we have the Viper, the Apex Predator. He is Randy Orton. I put Randy Orton in my top two because Randy Orton, man. Randy Orton is a very good wrestler. He's a future Hall of Famer. He's a veteran. He's basically almost, he's done it all. From WWE Champions, World Heavyweight Champ. Intercontinental Champion, Main Event of WrestleMania, won a Royal Rumble. The man is a veteran. He's obviously a future Hall of Famer. And I put Randy Orton here because his finisher is one of my favorites. I, I, my next, probably in my next two to three videos, I'm going to be doing my top five favorite WWE finishers of all time. So, yeah. By the way, getting back to talk to Randy Orton, I put him in this list, so let's get to my number one. And to top it all off, we have the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins. Now, Seth Rollins, man, he's always putting up a good match, entertaining, great on the mic. I like everything about him. He's my favorite. It was really tough between him and Roman but I had to put Orton in the middle, so I went with Seth Rollins as my favorite of all time. And one of my favorite memories, one of my favorite matches live was when Seth Rollins actually took the Universal title away from Brock Lesnar. 